show you how to make target kill entity so that when you hit that trigger you're gonna die there's two ways of doing that actually you can select a trigger uh, go to trigger hurt press N to bring up the entity window you're gonna hit silent so it doesn't make that noise when you uh, hit it and no protection so that even if you have an environment suit it'll kill you regardless and then your key is gonna be DMG for damage and the value of 9999 you can also make the value like 5 so every second that you're in there it'll do 5 damage to you well we want you to die instantaneously so we're gonna make it 999, 9999 doesn't matter escape to deselect that so now once you hit that trigger you're gonna die that's one way of doing it another way of doing it is setting this to trigger multiple deselect Go to target, I'm sorry, target, kill. Deselect that again, select a trigger. I think we already set it to trigger multiple, but whatever. We, with that still selected, we're going to select the uh, target kill. Control K to link it. And now you see the green arrow going from the trigger to the target kill. That's another way of doing it. You could do either way, it doesn't matter. So we want to make a teleporter. So we're going to delete the uh, kill trigger. I'm mean, sorry, the uh, the kill entity. Then we're going to go to miscellaneous. Miscellaneous teleport destination. Destination. We're going to drag this guy to the floor. In CPM, if you want him to do a tele jump, drag it right on top of the floor. The floor is right here, as you can see. And this is your guy right here, so you want him on top of it. Deselect that. Select the trigger. Go to trigger, not multiple. You don't want multiple. You want trigger teleport. Select trigger teleport. Hold shift to select the um, teleport destination. With both selected, control K to link it. And now you have an orange arrow pointing from the trigger to the teleport destination. So we're going to add a checkpoint now. We'll put it dead center in the map. Target. Oops. Target checkpoint. Deselect. Trigger. Trigger multiple. Select a target. Oops. Control K to link it. And we have a checkpoint. So we're going to add lights now. And go to right click on a 2D grid and it's going to hit light. By default, I think the. Um, oops, what did I do here? Let's say, okay. By default, I think it's. Uh, come on. 100. But then again, it also remembers the last amount you put. Last time I used a light, I used a light of 500, so I remember that. But we want to use a light of 100. So you type in 100 and you press OK. And this is your uh, light intensity rings. You could also see it in the um, 3D camera. The middle ring is your most intense. Outer ring is your least intense. I don't know what this ring is for. It's... I've never really seen any light go past this second ring. So I'm going to space this out, put it right in the middle of the map. You don't want it touching the walls or the floor because then you can see the uh, the light. It'll just be like one big bright spot on your wall and it just looks ugly. So you want to set it right in the middle, have a nice even flow of light throughout the map. I'm going to space this out. Press. If you press Shift X, you could get these uh, these uh, green grid lines on your grid, if that makes any sense. So if you do Shift X again, you can see it's gone. Shift X, and those green things are there. It's good for us helping you uh, get even spacing. So for this example, it would be the lights. I know the uh, light intensity, it stops here. So I'm going to remember that, and I want one above one past it. So it's not overlapping, it has an even spacing amount throughout the map. So I know it stops here, 
right here. And I want it here. So I'm going to press space to copy it. Double check that and it's good. Ends here. And I want it here. Check it again. And it's good. I'm going to press escape to deselect that. Oh, and I'll show you how to add color to your lights. With the uh, light selected, you're going to press K. And you're going to bring up the uh, color values. Now, when making... Uh, adding color to your lights you can't make it black you can't make it a dark gray and you can't make it a dark in this case like a burgundy color a dark red you could choose like a red red a very light red or sort of like a in between red but that's a pretty much it I mean you can use orange yellow green whatever but I'm just using red as an example here I don't want well, I'll make them red why not I'll make that one light red and have them all the same. So you can see now the lights are red compared to this one, which the lights are white. You see the difference? There we go. So we have a player start, teleporter, start timer, checkpoint, stop timer. And we'll add a light here. Um, that's pretty much it. Oh, I'll show you one last thing. You're going you're gonna to select any non-entity brush. Non-entity meaning like triggers, uh, groups, uh, let's see, let's go on, on the list here. Function, buttons, doors, uh, timers, trains, anything like that. Non-entity meaning when you press N to bring up the entity window, it'll have the class name world spawn. So we're going to type in the key for the key. We're going to type in, um, what is it, light. Christ, what was it? Light map size. By default, it's one. This is the uh, info in here. So if I say something wrong, you know, just read all the stuff in here. This is all the info. It gives uh, detailed information on everything. So if light, ma light map size might be underscore light map size. So I'm not too sure. But anyway, the default value is one. Uh, half of that would be obviously 0.5. I like to use a value of 0.25 or 0.35. Um, I'm not going to get into detail what everything does. Again, it's all in the info up here. You can just read it on your own. But I'm going to show you the values I like to use, which is 0.25. I'm going to do block size. By default, it's 20,048, I think, or 1,024, something like that. When... Um, Again, it's all in the info is when you you want to make the uh, the number, the value, a larger power of 2. So if it's 1,024, you want to make it 20,048. If it's a much larger map, 4,096, 81, 92. You get the hang of it. And so the purpose of block size is to help with compile times, which, believe me, it makes a difference. And then we're going to go to grid size by default it's 128 128 256 I like to use 512 512 1024 press enter oh, I forgot to key this in make it 4096 and then we have so these two right here help compile uh, reduce compile time this is this actually increases compile time for the lighting well it makes the lighting that much better so we have ambient, which adds overall lighting to the map, which I don't recommend using. You can read about it in here. Actually, this is it right here. Adds a constant value to overall lighting. Use is not recommended. Ambient light will have a tendency to flatten out var variations in light and, sh in light and shade. So don't use it. And then you have something else called min light. A uh, good value to use is between 10 and 25 it kind of darkens the map but if you're going for that kind of feel then you might want to use it so, so one map you maybe you might use 10 another map you maybe you might use 15 or 20 25 whatever it won't be the same throughout each map so I don't want men light in this one so I'm not gonna add it Maybe I'll add some a very low ambient uh, value. 
maybe like three or something. I'm not going to compile the map either, so I'm not going to show you the outcome. Um, and then we have message. Could be like made by ghost. Or you can say something like you suck. And whoever is watching this video is gay. I like that one better. So when you uh, compile your map under the map name, when uh, you're loading the map under the map name, it will say whoever is watching this video is gay. Or it should say whoever is playing this map is gay. Yeah, that's better. So um, I think that's pretty much it. So, I'm going to be continuing this, uh, these basic tutorials, so till then, see you later.